We're going to have on the third the ADP employment numbers that come out. Those numbers aren't going to be all that much of a market mover until Friday when you get non farm private payrolls numbers released. And that will either confirm these numbers or they'll just be dismissed if the non farm numbers come in stronger than what was expected. On the fourth, you're going to have factory orders. Initial jobless claims. You're going to have the unemployment rate announced on Friday. Guaranteed, they're going to try to get this number down. Or maybe the forecast is 8.1%. The White House wants nothing more than to see this number drop below 8. Huge, huge challenge to take on. But let's face it. This is a White House that is desperate to get reelected. They will do anything. To get reelected, and if they can, if they can announce that you have a an unemployment rate below eight percent, it'll be huge. Sure, after the election, it'll be revised back up again, but they will do anything. They're in control of this number; they can make it happen. Okay, folks, what you just saw was a excerpt of last week's members only the week ahead commentary which is released each Sunday afternoon and what I try to do in the members commentary for the week ahead is put into a video about 35 minutes long a, a synopsis of what economic data is set to be released the impact on the market a, a review of how the charts on the major indexes sub, sub indexes currency markets as well as we review the charts of stocks that we're looking to either trade long or trade short. Now, I mentioned in that excerpt that the White House will do anything to get this number, the unemployment rate, below 8%. When I said it during the video last week, I said, you know, maybe I'm jumping the shark here a little bit by saying this, but in my gut, I knew that they were going to do something really desperate. And after the debates earlier this week, you saw how desperate they became today when they released the unemployment rate being 7.8% on a <laughs> on non-farm payrolls of an increase of 114,000 new jobs, which is a miss of what the market had expected at 120,000 new jobs. That's lower than the prior month's 142,000 jobs created. It's, it's astonishing to me. It's astonishing to me the corruption in Washington. I used to just complain all the time about Wall Street, but now I focus more about on Washington, and people get mad at me. Don't be, don't be such a, a a Republican or a conservative. I'm not. I can't stand either party. They're corrupt. This is the stuff that they pull. It's horrible. I I digress. I apologize. <laughs> so, so what what we're stuck with here at the end of the day is that we're supposed to believe, and I know my members don't. I have smart members. They're smarter than me. I just do the homework. What we're supposed to believe is that the creation of 114,000 new jobs dropped the unemployment rate last month from 8.2% to 7.8%. That's what Obama said. That's what the liberal media said today. Now, let's take a look at the real numbers. What they don't want you to know. What they don't want the general public to know. As Wall Street would call us, we are the dumb money. They are the Wall Street. They look at these numbers. Now it's you and I look at them together. This is the economic news release from the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. These are the real numbers. What you're fed by the media is what they want you to hear. It's what the government wants you to hear. What you should be looking at is not the U3 number highlighted here. U3, bear with me folks, total unemployed as a percent of the civilian labor force, the official unemployment rate, September 2012, 7.8%. Okay. Take a sip of water. Uh, 
take a Xanax, whatever you need to do, because this is your government at work, this is your media at work, your financial media at work, because trust me, those Wall Street guys, they're smart enough to know the position for what's about to come. Even Goldman Sachs today predicted a 200-point decline in the S&P 500 by the end of the year. That's Goldman Sachs the predicting a decline. That speaks volume. If they said a rally of 200 points, eh. What you should be looking at is the U6 number. And here it is. I don't know any people that were at one time fully employed. They had to accept part-time work that consider themselves to be fully employed. They're not making what they were. Their homes are in foreclosure. Wives are leaving them. Can't send their kids off to day camp, etc., etc. I don't want to depress them. But here's the U6 number, the reality. U6, total unemployed, plus all persons marginally attached to the labor force, plus total employed part-time for economic reasons. As a percent of the civilian workforce, plus all persons marginally attached to the labor force. Reality is 14.7% unemployment in this country. That's the reality. If I was working as a janitor last year, and I am now working at Starbucks, I cannot pay my mortgage. My fiscal condition is not good. That's the reality. That's the impact on the overall economy. 14.7%, almost 15% unemployed in this country, and they want you to swallow before an election, 7.8? Folks, they ought to all go straight to prison. They are corrupt. I just can't put it into words how disgraceful this type of behavior is. Let's move on. Okay, so what are we looking to do as we move in to the new trading week? We know what we know. If we're so smart, how are we going to trade off of this? Well, let's take a look at the VIX. The VIX on a daily basis is weak. No doubt about it. When you see a rollover, Below 80 on any index, any, any, anything that's measured with a stochastic, it's weak. So, my expectation is that we will at best see some sideways consolidation, perhaps even some further pullback on the VIX. However, what's critical to remember is this. Let me draw an overlay of the S&P 500. Okay, what you're looking at here is a weekly chart now of the VIX. You have an overlay of the S&P 500 here in blue. We're bouncing around the 14 level on the VIX, and there's a saying I always like to refer to, I mention to my members all the time, as often as I can, because it's so critical. When the VIX is low, you have to go, meaning you have to sell your stocks, scale out, buy put options. Whatever you need to do to raise capital, protect your downside, because it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. It can bounce around here for several weeks, if not months. However, you are poised for a major correction. Look at all the times in the past few years, the VIX, I'm talking post-fiscal crisis, 2010, the low was 15.23, massive rally on the VIX, massive correction on the S&P 500. Low, 2011, 14.27, correction on the S&P 500, massive rally on the VIX. Fast forward, here we are, low, 13.30 on the VIX. What do you think is going to happen? We're at the lowest point on the VIX, the volatility index, in three years. When this market corrects, it's going to be ugly, and we want to position ourselves as such. And I will be going through our trade strategies with members regarding our current holdings and potential future holdings this coming week 
in the week ahead commentary, which is going to be released this Sunday as every Sunday. Every, every, every Sunday I do it. So be careful of the VIX, okay? The VIX, there's a lot of complacency in this market. So when this market begins, take a look at my video on high frequency trading. When this market goes, it's going to go. I posted it today. I did two videos today. So here you have it. A setup for a huge, huge correction in the market. Goldman Sachs, again, called for a 200-point pullback on the S&P 500. That is a huge move before the end of the year. Even if they're half right, it's still a big move. So please, position yourself accordingly. If you want to get that video, the week I had commentary, sign up for my 14-day free trial offer, please, and I'll get that out to you. Okay, stocks we're looking to trade this coming week. Saragon Networks. This is on our watch list for the past couple of weeks. We watched it. We want to see it pull back, make a new low, double bottom. Very nice. We have a nice flag formation set up here. Now what we want to do is watch for a potential breakout, and then we will look to get long. I send out alerts to members when our long trade is initiated. And tomorrow, with members, I'll be going over the weekly, monthly, intraday charts and short interest as well. With the on, on the blog today, I'm just going to get through this, go over the daily charts of the stocks we're looking at. Next stock, Moody's. This has been on my watch list for a couple of weeks now. We're looking to get short of Moody's. Look what you're having here, a potential lower high. Draw your trend lines. Moody's is beginning to weaken. Am I going to say that it's going to drop to all-time lows or even below 40? No. It doesn't need to for us to make money. All you need to do is be right on your call and keep a stop loss above your entry point or your resistance level and get out if you're short. So I'll be going into this with members on the weekend as well. Next stock, Amazon. I touched upon this in my other video. Amazon, we traded it here when, I forget his name on Fast Money, not Guy Adami uh, or Nigerians, I like those guys, one of the other guys, he was wrong, uh, he said to buy it in the end of the day, I was already shorted by the end of the day, and sure enough, we were right, they were wrong, we scaled out, took profits, it's bounced back some, we kept a small position, we're going to look to add to that position using put options, so we'll look to get long, short of Amazon again in the coming week, if, if it suits us. This is a new one for us, Owen, Oakland Financial. They're a mortgage company, symbol OCN. You could see RSI, extreme overbought. Somewhat of a doji formation, not a doji formation, but it's definitely a sign of indecision on the candlesticks, and you had high selling volume. Does that mean it's going to drop straight down? No. There's a, there's a process for getting short of momentum stocks like this, if you go willy-nilly and go shorting your entire allotment all in one day, you stand a good chance of getting burned if you decide to go short. Okay, you need to, you need to study how many shorts are already in the stock. If there's a high short interest, well, you better be careful about how big of a position you open up because they, they just, those shorts could get squeezed once again and you'll be along with them. You want to short into that short interest. Let's move on. AMD. I've been I've been speaking about AMD for a couple of weeks now. Everybody hates it. That's why I love it. It's trading well. It's now trading below this primary downtrend line. And we are going to look for a rally. Big short interest in AMD. I'm going to be looking for a rally on AMD to the long side. And this is where it pays to get stopped out of stocks. It, there's no embarrassment in taking a loss. It's a part of being in the trading community. If you don't take a loss, if, you, if some guy ever comes up to you and says, I'm a trader and I never take losses, well, he's a loser. Because if you appropriately take your losses, you can be right only a third of the time as long as you let your winners run and keep your losses small and still be a hell of a trader. So we were stopped out, and I'm not embarrassed to say it, right here on AMD. Thank God we were. Now we're looking to get back into it down here at a much cheaper price. And we're going to look to ride it higher, big short interest, and we want to take advantage of that short interest. Helka Mining. We're looking to short Helka Mining. Symbol HL. Look, lower highs on the RSI. Lots of resistance up here. Again, with members, what I do is I pull back the monthly and weekly charts when we're looking to 
either long or short. We always want to look at a historical perspective of where does the stock sit and where is our best risk to reward opportunity. In the case of Helka, it's looking pretty good right now, and we may just look to short Helka, symbol HL, very, very soon. I do have a concern about volume, which is dropping off to the downside. I, I, I prefer not to get short of a stock as I see down volume dropping off. So I'm have a mosquito biting me here. Um, however, we will be looking to short Helka very, very soon. And we may even get long if we see a breakout. So stay tuned. If you want to get notified of these trades that we might be making, Please, sign up for the 14-day free trial offer. I'm not going to announce them until after I've closed out the trades. You've heard what I've said. I'm not embarrassed to say when I've taken a loss, like with AMD or with Zynga. Let's go to Zynga because we're looking to get back into Zynga as well. We took a loss on Zynga. Am I ashamed of it? No. No, because I expect to make... A whole lot more to the long side on Zynga, but we stopped out here. And it dropped off. Earnings came out not very good, but it dropped down on Friday, today. Good reversal on the day, although we did, of course, we have to fill this gap here. We do want to see some backing and filling. Huge, huge capitulation volume after a drop off like this. Frankly, I like Zynga. I like it. There's change going on. They're moving into different markets. So, Again, folks, sign up for the 14-day free trial offer. I'm not going to announce my trades until after they're closed. I owe it to my members to provide them with the premium content. My 35-minute video on the week ahead commentary, again, regarding the chart setups for the stocks that we're looking at to either short or long, monthly, intraday, daily. It's trade coach. You have an interesting stock that I haven't covered? You're interested in it? Shoot me an email. I'll answer the question for you. That's part of the membership. Besides trade alerts, the weekend head commentary, you also get my evening commentary as well. So please, take a look at my other videos. I lay out the case of as to why this is not a level playing field for the little guy. I consider myself a little guy as well. I'm one of you. However, I know how to play the game. You need to take trade contrary to what the financial media is telling you. You need to take into consideration the lies coming out of Washington, the lies out of Wall Street. He's talking.